The world is full of places that we still know very little about, some that offer an insight into a past, sometimes brutal way of life, and others that are natural phenomena that look like they are straight out of a CGI movie. So from a magnificent fly geyser, to the mysterious origin and abandonment of the lost city of Cahokia, here we'll take a look at five mysterious and wonderful places on Earth. As always, enjoy, and take a moment to appreciate the wonders of our planet. The Floating Eye Island In 2016, producer and director Sergio Nuspilla and his team were searching for a location to film a documentary. As they scanned Google Maps, their attention was grabbed by a strange circular formation situated in the Parana Delta Marshes in northeast Argentina. The circle of land is 118 meters in diameter, surrounded by a thin water channel. The two circles formed by the water and the land are so perfect that it's hard to believe that the island is a natural phenomena. What's even stranger is when Sergio studied the island in more detail by using the time control function on Google Earth. He discovered that the inner land disk appears to be moving and turning on its own axis. Intrigued by what he found, Sergio decided to go directly to the area to observe this strange phenomena with his own eyes and to try and find a rational explanation. Accompanying him on the expedition was two specialists, Richard Detroni, a hydraulic and civil engineer from New York, and Pablo Martinez, a tech expert. However, when they reached the site, the mystery intensified. They found the area incredible and extremely strange, and they discovered that the water surrounding the disk is very clear and cold, which is unheard of in this area. The group of explorers completed a summary report of the island's physical characteristics, stating the base is hard in comparison with the swamps that surround it, and they could see no obvious explanation for why it floats. It appeared to be perfectly circular and moved almost magically around an axis. These unusual characteristics led to it being nicknamed the Eye. After he was unable to get to the bottom of what the Eye was, Sergio launched a campaign on Kickstarter to try and raise funds for a secondary expedition. On the secondary expedition, he planned to recruit a multidisciplinary team, invest in diving equipment, specialist drones, and planned to collect and analyze samples from the site although it seemed this never materialized, and as such, the eye remains a mystery. Since then, many have speculated that it's some sort of portal to another realm, whilst others have a far more rational explanation, and claim that the phenomena is not necessarily unique for that area, where similar formations have been witnessed. Until we have a definitive answer, you can make up your own mind by searching on Google Maps using the following coordinates. Let us know what you think. Marfa Ghost Lights Halloween has been and gone, but that by no means that it's an end to creepy content, especially ghosts, so let's talk about the Marfa Lights, also known as the Marfa Ghost Lights, which are an unknown rare phenomena that have been observed near US Route 67 on Mitchell Flat, just east of Marfa, Texas. The mysterious glowing orbs have mystified people for generations. According to those who have witnessed them, the lights appear to be roughly the size of basketballs, and are described as glowing white, blue, yellow, red, or other colors. The twinkling lights act erratic, sometimes merging together, other times splitting into two and floating up in the air, or darting off quickly across Mitchell Flat. There seems to be no way to predict when the lights will appear. Now, they've been seen in various weather conditions as well, but only seem to show up a dozen or so nights a year. For the longest time, the Native Americans of the area thought the Marfa Lights were fallen stars. They were first mentioned outside the Native community in 1883, when cowhand Robert Reed Ellison claimed to have seen flickering lights one evening while driving a herd of cattle near Mitchell Flat. He assumed the lights were from the Apache campfires, but when he asked the locals, they told him that they often saw the lights too. After an investigation, they found no ashes or other evidence of campfires. During the Second World War, pilots from the nearby Midland Army Airfield tried to locate the source of the mysterious lights, but were unable to discover anything. As you would expect, 
Paranormal theorists have attributed the Marfa lights to everything from space aliens to the wandering ghosts of Spanish conquistadors. Academics have also tried to offer a scientific explanation for the mysterious lights, and some have concluded that headlights from vehicles on the nearby highway could explain at least some of the reported sightings, but not all of them. Another chain of thought is that they are a refraction of light caused by layers of air at different temperatures, creating an optical illusion, sometimes called a superior mirage or a fata morgana. A similar illusion is sometimes seen in the ocean, causing a ship to appear to float above the horizon. Others speculate the phenomena may be caused by the same gases that create the glowing lights known as Will O' the Wisp, a phenomena found around the world that is associated with swamp gases, mainly phosphine and methane, which under certain conditions can ignite when they contact oxygen. Although it is worth pointing out that the Marfa lights are nowhere near a marsh, however, there are significant reserves of oil, natural gas, and other petroleum hydrocarbons in the area which could include methane in quantities capable of producing a similar effect. Another suggestion is that the lights are the result of the igneous rock under Mitchell Flat that creates an electric charge produced under pressure by solid matter such as minerals, crystals, or ceramics. This is called a piezoelectric charge. However, despite these many theories, nothing has ever been proven, and if you were driving alone along Route 67 near Marfa, you'd be pretty freaked out if you saw the Marfa ghost lights dancing around in front of you, because to this day, they have not been conclusively explained. Mount Horaima Now this is an interesting one. Mount Horaima is a plateaued mountain about 1,300 feet high, located at the point that Brazil, Venezuela and Guyana converge and is the highest of the Pacaraima chain of tabletop mountains in South America. Long before the arrival of European explorers and gold hunters, the mountain held a special significance to the indigenous people of the region, and it's central to many of their myths and legends. They viewed the mountain as the tree that bore all the fruits and crops of the world, until it was cruelly hacked down by one of their ancestors, unleashing a terrible flood. According to the myth, Mount Horaima is the remaining trunk left after the flood. They also believed anyone who climbed to the top of the tabletop would not come back alive. To this day, the indigenous people living near Mount Horaima give reference to this great mountain and its history, and its unique structure and remote location, combined with the mysterious air of untouched territory and indigenous folklore, has created grounds for various unexplained theories. Despite the mountain being climbed from all sides on numerous occasions, the area has not been extensively explored, and many believe its remoteness and lack of investigation could mean some species considered to be long extinct may actually still be alive and well on Mount Horaima. This may sound hard to believe, but this theory is backed up by flora and fauna found on the mountain that is unique and includes pitcher plants, bellflowers, and rapid sea heather the enigma of Mount Horaima has drawn the attention of not only the prospectors and climbers, but also famous authors intrigued by its untouched swaths of land. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and his 1912 novel The Lost World described Mount Horaima with the characters in the story discovering extinct creatures were still living there. More recently, the Paradise Falls featured in the Pixar movie is thought to have been inspired by the dramatic waterfalls around the area. The indigenous people of the area are not the only ones who believe in the power and mystery of Mount Horaima. In addition to the intriguing plant life and legends, it is also known for its high frequency of UFO sightings. Witnesses have reported seeing strange swirling lights hovering above or between Mount Horaima and Kukanam, another nearby Teipui, or tabletop, and the whole region is considered a UFO hotspot. Another odd phenomena has been reported from those who have managed to scale the mountain. They claim to have felt as if they are in an altered state, with some experiencing a trance-like mindset, followed by a bizarre dream involving aliens. Some have even likened the energy of Mount Horaima to that of Stonehenge or the Bermuda Triangle. Even some skeptics seem to be convinced of the power of Mount Horaima after exploring it. What an incredible mountain 
and one that certainly doesn't get the recognition or coverage it deserves. Nevada's magnificent fly geyser. Not such a mystery this one, but rather an accidental man-made geological wonder. This alien looking formation known as fly geyser is located near the edge of Fly Reservoir on the Wallapai Geothermal Flats, just north of Gerlach in Nevada, USA. It's not the first geyser to form in the area, but it is the most extraordinary. The first geyser at the site was formed in 1916 when a well was drilled seeking irrigation water. However, when the geothermal water was found to be close to boiling point, the well was abandoned. However, the opening formed a 10 to 12 foot or 3 to 3.7 meter calcium carbonate cone that jetted above the landscape. The geyser remained there until 1964, when a geothermal energy company drilled a second well near the site of the first one. However, on this occasion, the water was not hot enough for energy purposes, so they capped the well and left it. However, the seal failed, and the discharge released sufficient pressure to cause the original geyser to dry up and another cone to develop at the second site. The dissolved minerals in the escaping water accumulated around the new geyser, creating the cones and travertine pools that can be seen today. The geyser now has various conic openings sitting at a mound that is 25 to 30 feet or 7.6 to 9.1 meters tall. The temperature and chemical composition of the mineral laden water spewing from the cone is unique and the water can exceed 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. It contains an extremely high volume of silica and the silica combined with the heat has caused quartz to form inside the geyser. It's worth noting that quartz typically take up to 10,000 years to develop in geysers, but these have been developed incredibly quickly, unlike any other in the world. The water is released continuously, sometimes reaching five feet or 1.5 meters in the air and has formed several travertine terraces, creating 30 to 40 pools over an area of 74 acres. The water produced by the geyser contains thermophilic algae, which flourish in moist, hot environments, and is responsible for coloring the rocks with brilliant hues of green and red. Since 1964, two additional geysers have been created in the area and continue to grow, but neither are yet as spectacular as the fly geyser if you live in the area, this is definitely worth the travel. The Lost City of Cahokia The Cahokia Mounds are all that is left of a pre-Columbian Native American city, which existed between 1050 and 1350 CE. The historic site lies in southwestern Illinois, between East St. Louis and Collinsville, and covers 2,200 acres, containing about 80 mounds. Long before Columbus reached the Americas, Cahokia was the biggest, most cosmopolitan city north of Mexico. Yet by 1350, it had been entirely deserted by its native inhabitants, and no one really knows why. In its prime, about four centuries before Columbus stumbled onto the Western Hemisphere, Cahokia was a prosperous pre-American city, with a population similar to London's. But rather than developing like London into a modern metropolis, Cahokia is more like the fabled lost continent of Atlantis. It was built by the Mississippians, a group of Native Americans who at the time occupied much of the present day southeastern United States. The Mississippians farmed, traded and hunted, and it appears they built and planned the Cahokia to double as a pilgrimage city, where all of them would gather for religious events. We know that the land was prone to flooding, so all the key buildings were set atop vast, hand-built earthen mounds, the largest of which was found to be 100 feet tall and covered 14 acres that still exist today. This one is known as Monk's Mound. Monk's Mound was the site of a sizable building believed to have been used as a political, spiritual meeting place. Just west of Monk's Mound, a circle of tall posts used the position of the rising sun to mark the summer and winter solstices and the spring and fall equinoxes. In 1961, the posts were re-erected and dubbed Woodhenge by archaeologists who began researching the area. 
in reference to Stonehenge in England. The mound building would have been backbreaking work, with the Mississippians digging up, hauling, and stacking 55 million cubic feet over the course of a few decades, using no more than woven baskets to transport the earth. When you think about it, this is a feat likened to the building of the Egyptian pyramids, yet very few talk about it. Excavations of the area since the 60s have produced fascinating information about the ancient city. Investigators have found artistic stone and ceramic figurines, as well as a small copper workshop adjacent to the base of one of the mounds. Inside they found a fireplace with coals, where copper could be pounded out and tempered, before being made into ornate objects. Archaeologists also discovered a mound containing mass burials, and the nature of the injuries to the remains indicated that the Mississippians may have conducted ritual human sacrifices. Hundreds of people, mostly young women, buried in these mass graves were either strangled or died of bloodletting. Of the men found, four had their heads and hands cut off, and in another burial pit that mostly contained males, they had been clubbed to death. There is no evidence that the city was besieged by warfare or invasion from outsiders, but what is obvious is something catastrophic drove the settlers out. Although the story of Cahokia's decline an eventual end is a mystery. Tales of Cahokia don't even appear in Native American folklore, which is unusual, and it seems that whatever happened there doesn't bear talking about. Despite it being one of the 24 UNESCO World Heritage Sites within the United States, many people still do not know about it. So, that's five mysterious and wonderful places on our home planet. We hope you've enjoyed, and always remember, while we often spend much of our time wondering what's out there, up in the universe, we often forget that some of the biggest mysteries out there are right here on Earth with us. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next video.